Well, uh, hi there folks, and welcome to Isle of Wight Bushcraft. In this video, I'll be making a cookser. So stay tuned. Isle of Wight Bushcraft. Beautiful, lovely. Well, uh, hiya folks, and uh, you join me here again at uh, Isle of Wight Bushcraft Base Camp. And uh, this time out, we're um, looking to make a, uh, a cookser. Well, I'm going to be using this nice piece of uh, sycamore that I have here to make this cookser um, from. This is well seasoned. I harvested this probably about a year ago. A couple of little cracks in it there, um, but it's not too bad this end. So I'm hoping I can use that end there and uh, you know, put a bit of a shape into it and then up and so forth. So hopefully there's a cookser in there somewhere <laughs> but we'll see. So first thing I'm going to do is um, I'll show you the tools we're going to be using and um, then we'll start uh, removing some of the uh, the excess wood from, from this piece. So I'm uh, going to be using my machete and using my axe and uh, these are nice and sharp. And I've got my uh, smaller maul there and, um, and I've also got my, um, my tool roll here and uh, I've got a sharpener there and um, <sighs> got my little uh, small gouge um, a crook knife, um, gouge, and carving knife. So I'll be using those as I need. A pencil, of course. A little bit of auto sole, which I keep in there just to um, keep these polished. They are very prone to uh, rusting up, corrosion. I'll put those down there on the floor. And of course, if I need to, I'll also be using my trusty Jack Law bushcraft knife. <laughs> and of course uh, my folding saw um, to, uh, to make my, uh, my stop cuts in the wood. So uh, those are the tools I've been using and I've got a nice uh, little uh, work uh, block there that I'll be using. So the, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, going to use the um, machete. I, I have got a throw in my uh, in my uh, camp, but um, it's a little bit heavy duty for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my machete actually, and I'm going to uh, bat on down the, uh, the length of the wood to give me my my flat base along, and then gradually just. Uh, inch away at this wood and get a basic shape and, um, and then we'll begin shaping proper. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is use the mole and the machete and um, take some of the, the, the top wood off. Upside down. Do the same this side. That 
that's a better tool to use. That's better. And as you can see, I'm just using the axe toward the, uh, the head of the axe. And uh, that gives me more control. If I were to use it at the end, it would be I'd have a lot less control. This way I can just chip away at it. Pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take the folding saw. So we'll put the stop cut in around about there. Uh, not too much, so that uh, I can always take off, but obviously I can't add on uh, wood. So yeah, I'll, I'll give myself a little bit of an allowance. I'll take off there and then uh, axe down to there, and then we'll take this excess material off here. So that's a uh, Let's put a cut in. It's quite hard with this sycamore. Uh, I'm not going to rush it. There we go. That's the uh, stop cut. And uh, if you're not, not familiar with stop cuts, and the reason I've put that cut in there is so that when I remove this excess material from here, it will stop the cut will stop it there and uh, and stop it splitting down the length of the wood, which would be disastrous. So by putting stop cuts in, we can uh, you know re re remove material safely. So that's the that's the purpose of the stop cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my uh, machete and I'm just going to, uh, and, and the mole, and um, just split that down there and remove this piece here. So I'll just take my machete and uh, line it up very carefully. Now I don't want to go beyond the cut, that stop cut. I don't want the machete to go beyond that, otherwise I could split it all the way down. So I just want to line that up so it comes just inside the edge that cut because I can always trim it off just to finish and like I said a moment ago I can't add it on so there we are that's perfect okay let's give it a clout with a mauler oh, there we go there we are so that's that material removed So now what I think I'll do is I'm going to uh, take the axe, I think, and a um, little bit of axe work and just shape this bowl area a little bit, take, uh, take that material off there. Um, might actually be able to use the saw for that, take some of that off of there. And, and, and uh, probably put a couple of stop cuts across there and then take that material off there as well. I don't want to take too much off because I'm planning at this stage to have that uh, kind of put a spade end on the end of the handle. The handle won't be that long either. But yeah, so I think I'll put a, 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 a cut, a saw cut across there, and then use the, and then a bit of axe work to uh, start shaping the cookser. So I think it'll come across kind of there. Yep. Well, so there we are, I've taken the uh, that, um, excess wood off of there. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is take my, take my axe and um, do some axe work and uh, use the axe to shape, uh, shape this part of the bowl, round it off there, 
and this part at the back of the bowl here, just to round that off. And I may even um, use the axe to actually shape this handle more, actually, just roughly. So uh, yeah, get the axe and uh, start shaping that. <laughs> Okay, put these tools up out of the way. Okay, they can't do no harm up there. Okay, let's start shaping this. So there's just a little bit I need to take off around the end here, the end of the cookser, and I'm just using the machete to uh, to do that because I don't want to take too much material off from the end here, and I fear that the the axe would do that. So with the machete, which is reasonably sharp, I can just chip away at that bit there. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but the grain is actually running diagonally across. Um, and that's what I want, I want a diagonal plane of, uh, of the grain going across the cookser. If it was horizontal and flat like that, it could easily crack, split and fall off. But having it a diagonal plane gives the, uh, gives the cookser more integral strength, I find. So uh, there we are. There we are. You can see that uh, grain is running diagonally across. <laughs> well, uh, there we are, you can see the, uh, the cooks are uh, starting to take shape. We've got the bowl section um, there. I think what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take my pencil and start marking out the shape of the, uh, of the handle because uh, I think I'm ready to put some, uh, some stop cuts in here and, uh, and then taking out that excess material there. I don't want to go too far on the bowl because I, I want to leave myself uh, plenty of material uh, or enough material so that I can um, carve that into shape. Now this, with this uh, particular cookser, um, the other one I've got is a lovely smooth cookser and uh, they are nice. Uh, and I'm particularly fond of the other cookser that I've got. Uh, the other one, I don't use it actually, but the one that I bought from Finland, Lappy, a Lappy cookser. That's, um, that's a really nice one, it's got a bit of antler, uh, um, it's got a bit of uh, reindeer antler finishing on the handle. Uh, but that's a smooth cook, so but this one I want to be um, like a rough cut, you know, I want to see, I'm going to leave all the carving marks with the knife on the cook, so I do actually prefer that and I'll tell you why. Um, it's a bit like a painting. When you look at a, a, a painting, particularly a, uh, a loose style painting, you can see all the brush marks and every brush mark tells you something about the artist. That's the artist has left his impression uh, on that canvas or, or that paper. And, you know, it's almost like part of the artist has been conveyed or transmitted into his uh, his his piece of art. And I think it's the same with, a, with any wood, any carving, uh, particularly with a cook saw. Each knife mark on the, uh, on the, on the wood, uh, that's a piece or a part of the, of the person that carved it. It's, um, and that for me holds value. So uh, that's the plan with this one. I'm going to leave every uh, carved mark on there. I want it kind of rough cut. 
Anyway, what I'm going to do now is um, <laughs> enough yabber from me. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to mark out this handle. I'm ready to put some stop cuts in and uh, something got starting to get a semblance of the of the shape of the cookser. So I'm just um, putting a center line there with a pencil and I think what I do is going to round it round it off probably to there. Yeah. And these are only guidelines, it's, uh, there we are. And then if I transfer that across to there, and then um, just take my finger and pencil, measure in there, that's okay. And I can transfer that to there. Okay, now I should be able to Transfer, transfer that curve out to there. Like I say, these are only guidelines. So, uh, and then I think I'll round that edge there as well. You kind of get the idea. There we are. And uh, I think that'll do to, to begin with. And I'll take this material out here with a, I think a series of stop cuts and take that out there. And I may well just take a little bit more out there at a later stage, but for the moment, that's uh, enough material for me. So uh, let's set about removing that now. Okay. So I'm going to probably put a cut there, and then another one there, and then another one there. But uh... so I'm just starting off the cuts there. There we are, so you can see the stop cuts that I've put in. So I'll just remove that timber there, and then I'll do exactly the same the other side. And then I'll uh, remove this material off here. So. I'm just taking the uh, re remaining material out with the uh, machete. There we go, that will do for the moment. Like I say, I can tidy it up a bit later. just want to get the, the rough shape. Um, there we go, so you see the uh, material that we'll use for the handle. Do the same the other side. Yeah, so we've got the rough shape. Like I say, I've got to clean up and take off more material yet. But you get the idea. We're starting to get some sh some semblance of a coxer. So I'm going to do the other side now, and then I should remove this material here. There we are. So there's our stop cuts. So I'll, uh, I'll remove this material now. 
So uh, just starting with the axe. And then I'll um, finish with the with the machete. Well, I think that uh, finishes that stage. I think that's the axe work done and the machete work done. And as you can see, we've uh, got our basic shape of the cookser. Um, you might be thinking it's quite a big one, but I want a fair size one, but I've got to take a, a, a fair amount of wood off yet still. So uh, I need uh, room to play with, as it were. But there we go. That's, uh, that's the initial stages. So that's the, uh, the stop cuts and the, uh, the axe work uh, and machete work done. So it's uh, time now to start um, carving using a knife and uh, just um, starting to carve our actual cookser now. Now initially I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is carve the bowl section and leave the handle till last. I don't want to carve that handle because um, if I, you know, there's a nice bit of wood there and that's acts as a, it's nice and sturdy. Um, and I don't want to put undue pressure on that while I'm carving this. So if I leave that as is, then that's nice and firm and sturdy. And once this section's done, then I can finish that off. So I think initially is I'm going to carve the outside of the bowl and then once that's done, I'm going to um, get the gouge and uh, hollow out the inside of the bowl. And then, last of all, I'll finish the finish the handle. So I think in the uh, the initial stages of the carving, I'm going to take my uh, trusty jack law and to begin with, and just and just take some. Uh, just take some. Um, just smooth that off to begin with. So what we're going to do now is uh, just take this uh, lovely uh, carving knife. This is uh, this is one that um, I won on uh, Wade's competition at uh, Woods Walker 65. Lovely carving knife, and that's just taking those off, uh, taking the wood off really nice. So we're going to smooth this bowl up using this. And then, um, and once I've finished um, smoothing this off, uh, then I'll put the flat base on, I think. We know where we are then once we've uh, smoothed this outer face off. Yeah, lovely, uh, lovely carving niceness. Well, I think uh, what I'm going to do also is just put my um, lines on on the handle there. That's the kind of design I'm thinking of. At this point, but it could change. We'll see how uh, we see how we go with the wood. Again, I'll just take a approximate marker off of that side and transfer that to that side. There we go. Same there. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Taking the area out there. And as you can see, you've got the basic uh, basic shape of the cookser. So, uh, as I said a moment ago, I'm going to take my carving knife and just um, smooth this off a bit now to start uh, shaping this bowl section. You can see here that I've uh, moved out into the lovely sunshine and uh, just using my, um, my jack law knife now 
just to uh, take um, some of this excess wood off and leave uh, leave some nice clean knife marks on here on this bowl. And the jack laws uh, working a treat. That's why I love these um, these bushcraft knives. These particularly these jack laws, very versatile. So the heavier work, which I'm doing now, I can use the uh, the jack law for. Well, uh, there we are. I think that's the uh, carving of the outer bowl work done. I think what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to uh, take the saw and just put the flat base, take that um, part off there. So we've got the flat base and I've uh, got a few little cracks around the top, but I knew that anyway. So I'm going to take that top part off as well. Get rid of that horrible bit of wood. And then I think I'll start um, a little bit of work on the handle. So. Well, I don't know. No, actually, I might leave that in place. Hollow out the bowl first. But the first thing is first is to uh, cut that flat base off. And just being careful not to take too much off here, and uh, gently does this. I'm going to keep it as level as I can. So I've um, used this um, bit of a log there. I've got a couple of uh, nails in the back there, just using it as a backstop. A bit of timber there, so I can um, gradually use my, uh, gradually remove this wood with a gouge. It stops the uh, cooks are sliding about everywhere. Well, I say cooksa, it's not a cooksa yet. I'm a <laughs> A little bit presumptuous there, possibly, because uh, I could end up splitting it. Right, just going to use my uh, gouge now. Take those, a bigger gouge. Once you kind of get the shape of this uh, this bowl, it's, you see I've put a pencil outline there. It will um, as a guide. But once you've got the general shape uh, uh, in place, then hollowing out is uh, a little bit easier. It's just getting that initial shape. You've got to be a bit careful, I find. So now I'm just uh, putting the cooks against the backstop and just coming down across the uh, across the grain there. And I'm just using the mole just to tap that down. And I'm being careful not to take too much out uh, material out at a time um, for fear of uh, cracking it. You can probably see uh, you can probably see that I've got a, a, a crack there. I knew I would get a crack there because there was a bit of a crack there originally at the end grain. There's that one there as well, and that's why I've left excess wood on um, so that uh, I can once I've hollowed this bowl out, I can take that back to around right about there, and that's why I have excess on the handle as well to allow for any of that. So it's always good to have too much wood rather than take it off too early and uh, have to start all over again. And I have done that before. <laughs> you can see the gouge is doing a, a nice job and we're starting to get a, an idea now of uh, what the cooks is going to look like. So we'll crack on with that for a bit. I 
don't think I'm going to be able to do too much more with the gouge. I think it won't be long before I have to um, start using the, uh, the hook knife. But we'll tape out, take out as much as I can with the gouge. So I'm, uh, I'm not using the maul now. I've taken as uh, much as I can do with that. So I'm just under pure hand and pressure, just taking, removing some uh, more of this material. As I say, I'll go down as far as I can with the gouge, but then shortly I will be using the crook knife. Uh, I will be using the uh, the hook knife, but uh, I'm pleased with progress so far. Other side. And again, uh, this is a nice sharp gouge, so it's taking a reasonable amount of wood off. And I'm just being very mindful as well to keep my fingers out of the way. And, uh, you know, thumbs there and so forth, just in case I was to slip and shoot that gouge straight into my thumb or finger. Always, uh, I'm always aware of direction of travel. So I always kind of think to myself, where could that slip there? Keep any fingers or knees, legs, anything away from that direction of travel. And providing you always mindful of that should be uh, should be okay a bit the other side now I think See, they haven't got too much further to go. I'm uh, nearly there now, and uh, I don't want to go too far. I can always take a little bit extra out if I need to. But um, yeah, you can see it's starting to starting to take shape. I've got to take that top there off. You can see where I've got a, as I mentioned a moment ago, a few little chips there and cracks. But uh, I'm going to take it back to that level. That's why I leave the extra wood on there. But uh, yeah, it's taking shape. So uh, I've kind of um, finished with this uh, this bigger hook knife now. Uh, can't really do a lot more with that, so setting that one aside, I'm going to use the uh, the uh, smaller, more double-edged uh, hook knife. Uh, and this uh, I can get in a little bit a uh, little bit deeper with this, and just finish off that bottom and and tidy it up. And then I think we're uh, just about there with the with the bowl. Let's uh, tidy that up nicely. Yeah, it's looking all right. That. Well, that's the uh, that's the bowl done. All I need to do is a bit later on, is uh, when I come to finishing off, is just uh, I, I will need to just sand that. Um, but uh, otherwise, this is all uh, all hand done. Uh, I've not secretly used any. Uh, power tools or anything like that uh, out of uh, out of shot or off camera this is all all hand done uh, with the tools that you've seen me using so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to put some stop cuts in this handle and uh, shape that and uh, but just before I do that I'm just going to take this the top part of the cook so where that crack is and just level that off well you can see I've uh, leveled this off now taking those cracks out and uh, take that just that top bit off so we're okay now but you see the cooks are starting to take shape so uh, what I'm going to do now is going to put these stop cuts in just shy of that guideline there 
start shaping the handle. Being very careful not to go too far because like I said earlier you can always take more off but you can never add it on. So there we can see I've put the stop cuts in and all I can do now is just uh, use the, uh, the gouge just to um, take these out. I thought I had a crack there for a minute, but no, it's just a saw mark. Yeah. So I use the gouge, take that out, and get a, a rough shape in, and then I can uh, start uh, tidying it up. And once, of course, I've done all this, then I'll start actually taking the carving knife out and then just um, start fine carving. We out. So I'm just going to uh, put that backstop back in place. Stop it sliding, just. Uh... So I'm just using my uh, my guidelines there. I'm way way uh, short of them yet. Long way to go yet, but uh, I will keep referring to those just so I know that I'm not going too far. And what I'll do is I'll come from this end to the middle, um, taking most of the material out, then I'll turn it and, and start coming from that end as well. So I'm just using the maul here as well, just to help uh, uh, help or assist the gauge. There we go. Turn that round now. And then if I and this way. bit harder there. These uh, gouges are very useful for uh, cooks. In actual fact, I would say a, a must have tool if you're considering making a cookser. And uh, if you're into your bushcraft like I am, then uh, making a cookser is a very satisfying project. And um, Hopefully something that uh, you can use for uh, a long time, many years. There we are. Just take those bits out and uh, then um, we'll uh, take a look at it, see how, see uh, how far we've progressed. See the marks on the wood that the gouge is leaving, and I love those marks. I won't be sanding those out at all. As, as I said, explained earlier, 
every mark is like the brush, the brush stroke of a, an artist's painting. So there we are, I've um, done uh, as much as I really want to with the, uh, with the gouge. So now I'm going to uh, just tidy this up a little bit, especially that area there, just with the, uh, the hook knife. And um, so say, don't worry too much about the line there. I was just using that as a guide. I want to leave it a little bit short. But as you can see, it's uh, starting to uh, take shape. And I'm going to bring this in a little bit more as well, a bit later, but that'll be at the uh, fine carving stage. But you can see it's uh, starting to come together. There we are, so it's uh, yeah, feeling a lot lighter now as well, now that I've removed this hood, but uh, yeah, we, we get in there. It's um, starting to take shape nicely, actually. So what I'm going to do now is just take the carving knife and just start fine carving now. I've still got plenty of wood to play with, uh, especially if I'm only using this uh, this knife. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to start um, a bit of fine carving with this now. And this is the uh, the really enjoyable part. I'm just smoothing this uh, top part of the handle off now. Kind of uh, taking some of that wood off there, so we're just uh, getting a bit more shape to the handle. I'm just taking the uh, a nice curve on that uh, handle and then uh, as you can see it's uh, starting to take shape and I'll probably uh, make that a bit smaller as well. We're getting there. I'm just taking, uh, taking some extra wood off from the outside of the bowl. Just chipping away at it. Get rid of these marks. Just give it a little bit more, a bit more shape there. And I'm just um, very lightly using the gouge again. Just to uh, help me remove a bit of material or wood. Just to shape the curve of this uh, the handle. Very careful. Just lightly taking the rest of this handle out. There we are. Just tidying that up. shaping the, uh, rounding off and shaping this handle now. You see the nice knife marks there. Um, I like that, I like those carving marks. Yeah, we're getting there. Just doing some little fine carving on the handle now. So I'm just, uh, just gently finishing off the uh, inside of the bowl now. Take a little bit more out uh, here, a little bit more out there, and then just <laughs> blending the edges in.
starting to get that, um, that finished look now. Let's get in there. Uh, cut myself once. <laughs> it's not really a cut. I just sort of just just caught myself uh, end of the knife in the thumb. The average I put plaster on. It's not getting uh, claret all over the uh, all over the cookser, but uh, very very minor and superficial. But yeah, we're uh, whoop, almost there. I think it's uh, a little bit more. Then I'll uh, sand the inside of the bowl. Okay. The reason I'm sanding the bowl out is because obviously with liquid going in, I don't want any uh, rough service for bacteria to get trapped and grow. So I've got to sand out the centre or the inside of the bowl, but um, the outside will be left as is. Maybe a light sanding just to remove any dirt, but that'll be it. Well, there we are. I've just finished sanding, uh, sanding that. Just give it a very, very light sand on the uh, outside. But as you can see, I've smoothed the bowl off inside. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think what I'm going to do is um, just give this a little bit of a stain. Um, you yeah, know, natural colour. Uh, I think what I'll do is um, boil some chaga. I've got plenty of chaga. And uh, use a bit of chaga in there. See if this take a, a stain from the chaga. But yeah, come on, please, please with progress so far. What do you think? <laughs> Comments below. <laughs> I think I'll, uh, I think I'll leave it there. It's, uh, I don't want it looking too, um, too neat and proper. Uh, I'll, I, I want it uh, looking almost like a medieval. Um, goblet sort of you know you can imagine this coming out of an old uh, medieval peasant's cottage or something the kind of look you know that's what I'm looking for anyway there we are that's the uh, that's the cook sir or carving finish I'm going to leave as is because I love as I meant as I explained previously I do like the knife or the carving marks on the wood I just think it gives it real character and that's a uh, a nice size cook so that here we are so i think what i'm going to do now is boil up some chaga and get a nice thick chaga tea going see the uh see the chaga boiling away nicely there give that a few more minutes so i'll take it off and uh, put the um put the uh the cookser in the uh, billy can there to uh, to stain and uh i see uh See what happens. Okay. Oh, I can smell that chug. It smells lovely. <laughs> okay, so uh, in goes the cookser. Oh, already it's uh, stained it. <laughs> Got to do half at a time. <laughs> I think what I'll do now is uh, shake that off and uh, what's well, quite hot and then put that in the other way. There we go. Okay, so let's add a few minutes that way. I'm going to put a little bit more down that way. A few more minutes and uh, it should be okay. I don't want it too long. Well, there we are. I think that's had long enough now. And let that uh, dry off. As you can see, it's got a nice colour. That's the. I'm pleased with that. And it will dry slightly. It will dry a little lighter. But I think that chaga has uh, coloured that really well. So I'm just going to give that a few minutes to cool down, and then I'm going to 
Going to have some of this chaga tea to drink. There's nothing wrong with it. There's only the wood bin in there. So, uh, and we can test our cooks are out for the first time. And there it is, the uh, the finished article. Well, almost finished. Just gonna let that dry off once that cooks are dry, so then I'm gonna rub some uh, olive oil into it. But other than that, that's the uh, the finished article. As you can see, that's uh, just drying off. Okay, time for a chaga tea. Nothing wrong with this chaga tea. Well, there we are. Baptism of the uh, of the cookser. And it's uh, first offering of um, rich chaga tea, and that chaga tea is beautiful. Oh yeah. I do like chaga tea, very good for you as well. Well, there we are, folks, from a, a bit of old uh, sycamore to a lovely cookser. I'm very pleased with that. It's uh, nice and rustic. Uh, with a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, flair to it, but uh, yeah, there we are. Nice little bushcraft project. Quite time-consuming. Um, you know, you're looking at a day, really, a good day to do one of these. Um, that's if you're doing it all by hand. Um, I have done this completely by hand. No power tools have been used with this at all to speed up the process, I promise you. Uh, now, if this is your first time you've visited uh, Isle of Wight Bushcraft, uh, why not think about subscribing? That would really help the channel, helps me to keep on making uh, these types of vids. So you can appreciate, um, vids are free to watch, but they're not free to make, so uh, that helps. And also guys, um, would you help me out by giving me a, a like and a share and a comment as well. That really, that does help the channel. It uh, helps with the algorithms. Appreciate that guys. Thanks for your help and your support in that. Now all being well, I've got lots of up and coming videos that I plan to make here at uh, Bushcraft. I've had a few requests to do uh, certain types of uh, videos, particularly when it comes to uh, bug out bags or go bags. So. Uh, might be dealing with that uh, shortly. Also fatwood, uh, what it is and how to use it. I have done a video on fatwood and how to find it. Um, and if you would like to see that to help you find fatwood, I'll, uh, I'll put a card up above here now. <laughs> and if you just click on that card as it flashes across the top of the screen there, that will automatically line up that fatwood video for you, ready to play after you finish watching this one. Does it say? Yeah, very good. But uh, there we are, folks. Uh, there's the uh, that's the cookser build. So I hope you've in uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe found it of some help uh, if you're thinking of uh, doing the same thing. As I said earlier, it's a lovely bushcraft project to uh, to uh, indulge yourself in. <laughs> Uh, but that's it uh, for this video, folks. Um, all being well, and I'll see you next time. But for the moment, take care out there and take care in there. And uh, all being well, I'll see you again. Bye for now.